Over the next several lectures, we will develop an IV, a current voltage model, for a MOSFET, which will include uh, modeling the, the charge in the inversion layer and accounting for such uh, features as velocity saturation and parasitic resistance and high frequency. So this is going to take a little bit of time for us to do, and this lecture is just the introduction. So what I'm going to do right now is get some terms in front of you and some concepts in front of you that are involved in modeling a transistor. We'll call it the small signal model only because it's pertinent to, to AC voltage as well as DC voltage, and you know signal tends to imply it, AC is an option. We're pretty much going to talk about DC for now because it, it handles most of the questions that we're confronted with. The little, it's not really sign convention, that's notation convention, is that capital V and I mean DC and small v and I mean AC. So here we have a MOSFET and there's bias placed, a voltage across the drain in the source, a voltage placed on the gate, and possibly a voltage on the body. And for now, maybe we just take the body and the gate and the source to be connected to each other. We'll separate that uh, shortly. Current flows from the drain to the source. The amount of the current that flows from the drain to the source depends on the voltage of the gate. You turn up the voltage, you change the inversion layer thickness, and you change the amount of charge in the inversion layer. You change the amount of uh, current that can flow from drain, drain to source. Uh, so we need an equivalent circuit for this construction. To build an equivalent circuit, let's ask what are the goes into's and what are the goes out of's. So there's a drain, which we'll say is where current enters. And the current comes out of a source. So we have a source. Now draw it as like a bus down here because there seems to be a direct connection from the drain to the source. That's through the channel. But there is a connection between the gate and the source through the capacitance of the oxide. And we need to maybe uh, account for that in our model. So let's put that in first. There is a voltage difference between the gate and the source. We'll just say it's across the oxide. And as we develop our IV model, we will account for how the voltage across the gate and the source actually varies along the channel. And we'll talk about a channel potential or channel voltage later. If we look at current going from the drain to the source, it passes through the channel, which has a conductance or a resistance. We will model that as well. Also, how much current goes through the channel depends on the gate voltage. So we need to account for that. If you have more gate voltage, you can have more current going through the channel. And so we have to have two things. One is the resistance of the channel. So the current goes through the channel resistance. But the channel resistance depends on the voltage of the gate. And so you account for that by drawing this dependent source across the channel conductance. So when you have a voltage or current source, this is a current source indicated, with a circle shorting across the resistance, you might say, that makes no sense. You can't short out a uh, current source. This means that there's a dependent current in this system. That is a current that depends on something that is not in this section. And that something is the gate source voltage, the voltage between the gate and the source. So we say that there is a it's something producing current that is dependent on the source gate voltage and G. So G's are symbols for conductance, so a particular conductance. And the drain itself has a resistance or one over a conductance. And so we'll say G sub D is the drain or the channel conductance. And I'll write this current using Kirchhoff's junction rule. If it's coming out of the drain terminal and going down to the source terminal, it splits right here. And so we can say I drain source equals the amount that goes through the voltage dependent source, which is G sub M V sub G S, and the amount that goes through the conductance, which is uh, conductance times the voltage across it, right? Current is voltage over resistance, or voltage times conductance. So this is just Ohm's law here. G sub M is the mutual transconductance. G sub D is called the channel transconductance. So the prefix trans is used in, in transistors, and frequently is dependent on some other source. 
They should normally not be taken to be constants. Let's just get the names in front of us first. The channel transconductance, or the D is for drain, the transconductance from the drain to the source, and the mutual transconductance, or rather the transconductance due to the gate voltage. So the gate transconductance. That's Kirchhoff's junction rule right here at this orange dot. What we're going to do over the next several lectures is turn this into a usable expression, which it currently isn't. And so let's talk about the transconductances. In general, the definition of conductance is a current over voltage. Transconductance is a dynamic conductance. So instead of just current over voltage, it's the derivative, di over dv, a change in current for a change in, in voltage. Let's look at the different forms of the subscripts. The channel transconductance, g sub d, it's a di by dv, but what? Well, it's the drain source current in each, each of these is drain source current, but it's how the drain source current depends on the drain source voltage at constant gate source voltage. And then likewise, the mutual transconductance you can describe as the derivative of the drain source current with gate source voltage at constant drain source voltage. And so those are the expressions then for the transconductance. They're taken at a fixed value of the other voltage and looking at the, the variation. Those of you studying thermodynamics right now will absolutely recognize this, this approach to variational calculations. So now let's account for the body effect. That is the fact that the gate and the body may not be at the same voltage, and that will affect the drain source current. And for that, we then should have a uh, separate indication of the body voltage, and so let's get that in there. And it's between the body and the source, and so I'll just show it like this. And V sub S B is the potential difference between the source and the body. That affects the drain current. And right now, we just have this 1 over G sub D, the channel transconductance between the, the drain and the source. But what the body effect does is that renders that not a constant. It, that makes that dependent on V sub S B. So I'm going to replace that, what looks like a, that conductance, G sub D, with a voltage dependent current where the voltage is the source body voltage. And the proportionality between that, the conductance that you multiply by that voltage to get current, is the body transconductance, G sub MB, which is related to the mutual transconductance, but then accounts also for the effect of the source body voltage on the threshold voltage. So that's the body transconductance. I mean, if the source body voltage didn't affect the threshold voltage, this derivative would be zero, and we would just be back to having a constant uh, conductance there. But this is, in fact, what we have. Okay, so then that's a little bit more of a development of the model. Now, what we're going to be doing in the next uh, lecture is coming up with an expression for I sub ds, the drain source current, as a function of the drain source voltage and the gate source voltage. That's to be V sub gs there. And it's going to be determined by the charge in the inversion layer. So that's what we're going to be looking at. For now, I'll just reference you to equation 664, where mutual transconductance determined from that expression is uh, this simple expression. And But to talk about it now, we're going to derive it next time. The mutual transconductance is not a constant. As you change the voltage between the drain and the source, it seems to change pretty much linearly a little nonlinear effect caused by the electrical oxide capacitance. So that's the mutual transconductance in the model that we will build <laughs> next time. You can't raise the drain source potential difference forever indefinitely. What's going to happen is eventually the drain source voltage is going to get to a point where no more carriers can join the current. In an ideal MOSFET where there's no threshold, that would happen when the drain source voltage is the same as the gate voltage. It happens sooner than that just because of the fact that there's threshold and there's capacitance in the body. But when that happens, it's called saturation. And this term gets used a lot with transistors, saturation. And what we're going to seek out in these next few lectures is the real meaning of saturation. So if you look at the drain source voltage, 
if it keeps getting raised and keeps getting raised, eventually you get to a point where the drain source current stops going up. And you call that the saturation voltage. V sub D sat, maybe you should say V sub D S sat, but we're not. We're going to say V sub D sat. And it's a value of the drain source voltage when the current stops increasing. That too is going to be derived next time. But let's look at the expression here. Uh, you see how it's less than but not necessarily a lot less than the gate source voltage the threshold voltage tends to be between zero and one volt and the gate source voltage tends to be between one and ten volts alpha is the body effect parameter remember if you're lightly doped if the body is lightly doped uh, alpha will be very very small because the body then has a large depletion region if it's lightly doped and therefore the body has a small depletion region capacitance that means not much body effect and so for a light doping alpha is very small but for heavy doping alpha gets larger probably you know between zero and when one most of the time if you put that expression in this expression with a mutual transconductance you have this expression for the mutual transconductance at saturation so when the drain source voltage has been raised to the point that the current just stops going up anymore that's what the transconductance equals but the transconductance is not a constant it's something that keeps going up and up and let me put a graph in front of us so this is the drain source current as a function of the drain source voltage which is a pretty straight you know, forward to, to grasp thing right because you, you put a ammeter you know, on the drain and you put a voltmeter across the drain source and you just measure them and then this is this is what you get is you raise the drain source voltage but if you change the gate voltage you get a different blue curve so each blue curve is for a successively higher gate voltage gate source voltage it's actually gate source minus threshold but, uh, you keep raising the voltage on the gate you'll keep going to higher higher curves just to interpret one, let's take this second to top one here. It says 6 volts. That means the gate source minus the threshold voltage is 6 volts. And you notice it's curved, kind of curved down until it gets to a point where it goes horizontal. That's saturation right there. And beyond that, it's in the saturation region. And so that's the current saturation. For a gate source voltage minus threshold voltage of 6 volts, the saturation drain current is you can go over here and read 36 somethings it's, a, it's arbitrary units I, I i found this a useful graph of who's on wikipedia and it had the the red curve which is really nice to look at uh, but it's arbitrary units meaning uh for some arbitrary transistor and so that's the um the meaning of the curve the mutual transconductance is the change of drain source current with gate voltage in saturation we'll call it the, the mutual transconductance in saturation and we have the expression here so the mutual transconductance in saturation remember we wrote this down it depends on gate source voltage well g minus my threshold voltage in this expression it's linear the mutual transconductance is linear in that but the drain source current uh, does not because as you go up and up and up in in values of V gate source, the drain source current goes up faster. Right? These are not equally spaced curves. And so that nonlinearity is also going to have to be in our model. How the drain source current has a V drain source squared in it is something that we're, we're going to have to uh, account for. But that's coming up next. And so I think I'm going to stop it with that. And, and we will begin again now with actually building the IV model from the inversion charge.